<gasps> oh my gosh. Look at that. How awesome is that? So cool. What? Oh shoot. Ooh, almost lost it. Look, it looks like glitter. Isn't that gorgeous? These are so cool. I think you can crush them. Oh! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Okay, I'm super excited. A little, little too excited about that. My goal for today is to try to make my own natural food dye. Um, so I went ahead and froze this. I froze my trays and uh, now I'll show you what they look like. I got my gloves on because that is cold. I have a link in the description. These gloves are amazing. They've come in super handy when you're carrying these ice cold trays. And I pretty much freeze all of my food before I stick it in the freeze dryer these days because I don't want to waste electricity freezing it in here. I'd rather freeze it in my freezer that's already running all the time anyway, and then pop it in here just to run the freeze dried cycle. First up, this is cabbage. I did baking soda with it. it, had a chemical reaction and created blue. I put them in cupcake holders to freeze them individually as a liquid. This is an experiment. I love experimenting. These are the plain marshmallow fondants and I kind of want to see what they'll turn out to be like. So I did that with the marshmallow fondant and then I also did a flat one to see how that would turn out. So this also is marshmallow fondant and I just added a little bit of the black cocoa powder to make them that darker color because I was trying to do a gray and a light blue for my son's amazing cake. It was an amazing cake. This is cabbage. It is the same stuff that's over here that's blue, but it is still purple. I have not added any baking soda to it. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is. And you can also add lemon juice or anything acidic and it will make that pink. So I'm going to leave these and experiment with it once I powder it. When I go to mix it in with my frosting, I'm going to try to see if I can get the perfect blue color. All right, this is tray number two and this one is the beet juice. It was in a cupcake holder, the little sil silicone shaped cupcake holders. That's why they're all these cool shapes. I got about four cans of beets, no salt added. And these, that is what I have here. That is what we have on tray number two. Okay, this is tray number three. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Check that out and how bright red that color is. That is gonna be so bright. Okay, I'm super excited. A little, little too excited about that. I did about one or two cans. I can't remember. I'll have to check my notes. But this is tray number three and I pureed everything, like the entire can of beets. So I went ahead and dumped these out when they weren't quite done yet. That's why it's a little chunky, but pureed wouldn't be this chunky if you just pureed it and let it freeze by itself like you're supposed to. So that is what this one is and we shall see how that turns out. I know that a lot of people, a lot of bakers use beetroot powder, which I believe, I haven't done too much research on it, but I believe that that is everything, like the whole beet. Um, just brown, ground up into a fine powder. So that would be what this is. Last but certainly not least is my spaghetti. This one is a family favorite, about a jar and a half. I, my six-year-old loves our spaghetti, so we always double up the recipe. And I've been wanting to freeze dry some to keep at our friend's house for a long time because he is super hard to feed. So if I could just have some of this freeze dried at their house, I won't have to worry about taking up their freezer space. I'll have it in a jar and then I can just boil the water and put it in there. They usually have pasta for me, but I can save that too. This is tray number one, and it is so frozen solid. Spaghetti usually does freeze dry really well, so I'm not really that worried about that one. I am excited to try out my dyes and see what the result's gonna be of those. And then I'll probably have to do another video of me mixing it in with the uh, buttercream frosting. Okay, wish me luck, I cannot wait to see how these turn out. Woo, oh man. Even it's coming out. It exploded yeah. all over the place. Can I see it? Oh, my six-year-old has informed me that there is a disgusting smell, so I'm guessing the cabbage and beets didn't sit well with him. The blue cabbage is a huge mess, and as soon as I pull that out, it's going to have chunks falling down onto the other stuff. So I'm probably going to pull things out from the bottom first so it doesn't get destroyed. Oh, wow. So you got a little bit of the, uh, the blue dye there. The tray is still cold. That means that it's still wet, and it's just cold all the way down the back. So that tells me that this is not done yet. So I'm going to go ahead and put this spaghetti back in the freeze dryer. It looks like it has dried a little bit on some of the other sides, just not all the way through. It's even still a little cold on the top. Let's check out tray number three. This is, ooh, it's warm. Okay, this is the uh, beets, and it was super thin. You can see here that it is completely dry. Actually, I don't know if you can tell that on the camera. There's a little crystal-like section here. It breaks up real easily, so that's good. I think this one's good to go as far as taking it out of the freeze dryer. It does look like a little bit of shiny area right here, but I think those are just crystals from the natural sugars that are inside of the beets. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at these. Ah, that's so crazy looking. Okay, these are so cool. That is it's super hot, first of all. Um, but these little bubbles here, I think you can crush them. Oh! <laughs> okay, so you can crush them. Can I try to crush them? 
I can give you some, but it's beet powder. I don't think you're going to like it. Is it good? It's good. You like it? Oh, he likes it. This is the beet puree, and then I strained all of the fibers out just to leave the juice. I did add a little bit of sugar to this one. That's probably why we see the little mounds coming up. And uh, I also added a little bit of uh, lemon. And so that's what we have here. And it's just, these were the uh, shapes of the muffin tins, the silicone muffin tins that I put them in. So I think these are dry. I did feel them. That is done, I would say. So here comes the big one. This is, oh, it's beautiful, first of all. Check that out. Look at those crystals. Oh shoot, Woo, almost lost it. Look, it looks like glitter. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. There's a big old blue chunk of the dye back there. Oh, look at that. This is super sticky. That's so pretty, okay. Okay, I'm easily amused. I'm gonna put that over here because it was hanging again, hanging off the edge and I don't know if it's gonna work or not. Wow, that is really stuck. Wow. Look at that. What? That is crazy. It's still wet right here. You can see a little bit of moisture right there. That's the side that was dangling off the edge. So these are my fondant pieces and these were flat when I put this in. These were not flat. These were this hard size. <gasps> that feels cool. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. And they are, they feel done, but I'm just going to be eating them like candy. So I don't think it really matters if they're not done all the way. Okay. I'm excited to try these. They feel hard as a rock though. So I'm also a little nervous. I'm going to break my teeth. We'll see. I'm going to try this. Oh no. This is already starting to melt. You can see there, it's not quite frozen and it started to drip. So this is definitely going back in there. This is why it pays to have a secondary set of trays. Uh, there is a little bit of, I don't know if you can see that way back in there, hanging off of the edge. It's down right there. It's down back there, um, back there, way, way, way in the back. It's a little chunk of purple and I'm gonna see if I can get that out of there. I'm not gonna call this successful, but I did get a lot of the purple out. Now, since this is not completely dry, I'm gonna assume that it's all wet and I'm gonna put it all back in the freeze dryer, but I'm gonna divide it out. See, this, feel, this feels brittle already. It feels like it's breaking down just fine. But since some of it that it was touching was wet, I'm not gonna risk it. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like a geode. How awesome is that? So cool. Okay. These are so cool. This was completely flat. It feels done too, like solid though. You hear that? Ooh. Oh, it did not break. I think I might have just made rock candy. These ones are the same size as I as they were when I put them in there. Do you hear that? Crazy. Urgh. I cannot crush that one. Look at that. Ah, I don't want to break my table. That is going to hurt to eat. That is really hard. Actually, you know, it's not that bad. It tastes like a marshmallow with the texture of a Whopper, like the malted ball that's inside. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, I could see myself doing that again. These are all fondant. They're marshmallow fondant. So I'm making little Easter eggs, I guess. Seriously, it looks like glitter. It looks like I have eyeshadow on my fingers. I might have added a little sugar to this one. So that's how it's gonna look. Uh, I don't know how much of that is wet still. You can see the other side of it because I think this might be a little damp right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in there. You can tell it's already getting sticky. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's wild. Okay, so this is what I have so far for the blue. I never in a million years would have imagined I could get that much from that. Now, once I press it all down and get all the air out of it, it'll probably be a lot less, but for now, that's what we got. Natural blue dye. I cannot wait to try it. Oh, here we go. I'm just also making sure when I squeeze the food that it's not cold. So this one would be the pureed and uh, not messed with. So I basically pureed it, froze it, and stuck it in the freeze dryer. Now I'm going to be doing tray number two, which these were the cupcakes holders. Now this one I did add a little bit of sugar to, and I wonder if that's why it is a little bit sticky. I'm pretty certain that's why it did bubble up at the beginning. Oh yeah, that's hard. 
That is not as soft and powdery. I don't know if you can hear that. I did it as close to the microphone as I could. Um, that was super crunchy. They're pretty crunchy, like hard. And now I kind of want to try that. Oh my gosh, that is so good. It tastes like Kool-Aid. All right, so the freeze dryer has been running overnight. It said it only needed another two hours, but I went ahead and ran it overnight because I was tired and went to bed. So now the dye should be completed and we're gonna go ahead and see the results of that. So this is done, definitely done. It's very, yes, this is very warm. You can see here, it's one nice layer. Gotta be gentle with it. And you can tell that it's pulled away from the edge even more so than it was when I pulled it out last time and it wasn't completely dry. Look at that one. This one's also warm. I don't steal any frozen pieces to this. And you can see here that it's got little bubbles. This must be from the sugar. I don't want to crush it. I forgot to turn off my ceiling fan, so I'm going to do that and then put these away. After everything is melted inside there, then I go ahead and wipe everything down. I don't try to do it while it's frozen because I can't pull out the rack anyway, so I just wait until it's defrosted and then I go in there and wipe everything down. So before I put away my dyes, I'm going to go ahead and put away my spaghetti first. Look at that hole, zucchini. Now I should be able to fit all of this inside of this jar, but I'm gonna have to crunch it down. You can see there's a bunch of air down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these dyes away and hopefully they'll turn out well. And it feels dry to me. There's no cold parts at all. Oh man, that's so light and fluffy. And it is not cold at all. That means that it is done. And with that, we are done.